three mistakes that uh, I would say I did this year. Hey folks, it's uh, Mark from Top Notch Farms here. Uh, just getting out of a couple wet days and uh, it's finally time to plant the last of our pumpkins and some plastic mulch. And I guess the, if there was a word for today, it's uh, uh, trial and error and mistakes. Um, so what do I mean by that? Uh, well, a couple things. We use plastic mulch on the farm. Um, it's a great way to help cut down on weeds. Uh, I have an earlier video uh, I'll link to uh, with me planting uh, broccoli into plastic mulch where that was new. It's great. Um, here I'm trying something a little bit different. So I held over my plastic mulch from the previous year and I thought, you know, let's, even though it's biodegradable and, and it will break down, I thought let's try and hold it over, get a second use out of it. I'm trying to reuse the drip tape. I'm trying to use the plastic mulch again. And some of the plastic mulch holds up, holds up all right. Some of it does not hold up so well. So here is what it looks like today. Um, so you can see here, uh, a lot of it has broken apart and split, and it's just not gonna really serve the purpose that it was meant to, which is a weed barrier. So here I, I just finished um, whippersnippering this. So I cleaned it at the sides, but you can see in the middle, you know, we, we've got a lot of weeds. Um, it's really not gonna serve its purpose. So, I'm gonna still use it. It's a little late in the season to be planting, uh, to be laying new plastic mulch. I mean, I still could. Uh, I did plant some other plants in here, and, there, and I'm planting pumpkins in here. So very soon, you can see uh, this pumpkin, it's gonna get so big, it's gonna take over, and it will shade out any competition it has. So I'm not so worried about that, but this concept of holding uh, a year of plastic mulch over from one to the next, um, pretty much confirmed that this is a mistake as as you can see the weeds that are coming up through it and then the ground around it uh, So that's mistake number one uh, You know I had a I had a farmer tell me um, that has been at it his whole life. I mean I grew up on a farm uh, So I've been around it my whole life, but you know, it's one thing to be around it It's another thing when you're making your own own decisions and stuff um, I, I had someone that's been at it for a very long told me that the year that you don't make any mistakes is the year that you're not trying anything. So uh, anyways, my second mistake was is I got access to a lot of free compost. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going to start cutting my potting mix 50-50 with the free compost. And this compost had been sitting around for a lot of years. It was uh, horse manure, I got a lot of it, it was free. Um, and it was full of weed seeds. So. Here is the net result of my pumpkin planting with the half potting soil and half compost. You can see that the seed trays are full of weeds. So right off the bat, we have to turn around and weed our starts, which is not a great way to start and then the plants are competing. Anyways, again, so mistake number two. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so there's two mistakes within one crop within one season. So hopefully I'm learning a lot uh, If I want to use free compost, I'm gonna probably have to do a much better job of setting it out turning it and Getting it solarized and getting all those weed seeds baked off because obviously their compost pile that I got was not hot enough um, So now I'm dealing with uh, weeds in my starts weeds in my plastic mulch and uh, anyways is what it is uh, can only go forward lesson learned uh, two mistakes down I'll just show you here real quick here's some uh, new rows of uh, these are honeycrisp trees so we just transplanted these uh, in the spring here uh, they're faring out pretty well uh, you know they definitely they definitely got set back a little bit with the uh, with the uh, the transplant uh, shock and and what that does to a tree but you know, uh, I mean, you gotta do it at some point. So these would be three year old Honeycrisp trees that we grafted on M26 rootstock. Uh, I'll come back to that some other day. We'll get into it and uh, I'll show you that more specifically. Uh, so for today, uh, we're just gonna fill in the rest of this space here on this row uh, with uh, the pumpkins that I have here. 
and I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride. So like I said, the uh, the pumpkins, they're a pretty, you know, they're a, they're a crop that a lot of people will even plant directly into a field. So, you know, as far as something that the weeds are gonna mess with, maybe at the start, but after a little bit, they'll kind of take over. They'll take over the space. So, um, not tremendously worried, but uh, still not tremendously happy. Uh, you know, for the amount of time uh, I'm putting into uh, saving a crop like this or saving the plastic, I mean, it uh, I would have been better off just to uh, rip it up, start from scratch, and uh, have a much nicer uh, start. Anyways. So that's something I wanted to do when I uh, kind of figured I'd uh, take the time to make these YouTube videos is show not only the failures or the successes, but also the failures. I mean, you know, this is real life. Uh, you know, I'm doing this as I go and as I'm learning and, and hopefully someone's gonna learn with me as, as well. I mean, I have learned so much from YouTube and uh, people that have been doing a lot longer or tips and techniques to how to you know to avoid years of mistakes uh, that's one thing about farming is is if if you make a mistake uh, sometimes you don't get a chance to to fix that mistake till the following year so you know it's always nice when you can uh, you know decide oh well how do I trellis tomatoes or how do I grow peas or how do I do this or how do I do that or how do I deal with this sort of insect pressure where you can go and you can uh, learn from somebody else that has been through the ringer has made the mistakes and then you know that's saving you maybe years of years of anguish and and maybe hundreds if not thousands of dollars uh, you know So while we're at it, might as well as talk, <clears throat> if we're talking about mistakes, might as well as carry on. I would actually say I made a third mistake on these, which is I normally start things on a heating tray and I have like this under a uh, heat mat that I put on a wire rack and then I'll set the, uh, the trays here, which have an open bottom and stuff, but I'll set them on a, uh, on a shallow a 1080 tray and uh, and then I'll set them on the heat mat and leave them there till they germinate and these are a kind of a fill-in crop I wanted to have some to sell at the farmers market that sort of thing so they were late so I had my outdoor greenhouse up and running my starter greenhouse and I decided oh well I'll just leave the plants outside in the starter greenhouse which is you know a great spot to be for the bigger plants, but I got terrible germination. And these are uh, Howden pumpkins, so I've grown them a number of times. Never had issues with the germination before. So I feel like 
uh, you know, as nice as that greenhouse was for the bigger plants, it was not as nice for the little plants. So we're going to say that, uh, we're going to say that probably the heat was not consistent enough, not thorough enough through the day or it's probably, especially at night. And I just didn't get the germination I would have expected. Like if I, uh, if I were to say, I probably only got 50% germination, maybe even a little less on something that's normally probably in the 90% germination. So uh, once I realized that, the, uh, the next thing that I started, uh, kind of for a late season crop, I'm doing some extra cilantro and basil to have at the farmer's market and just to uh, have, a, have a few more plantings of throughout the year. Um, I really love cilantro and I really like basil, so it's just, I wanna keep that, that herb going through the, the summer months. Um, I made sure that I'm putting those in the heat mats inside and I'm back to getting almost, you know, perfect germination. So, so the greenhouse, um, even though I have it heated at night, uh, on the cold nights and such, just did not cut it for germination. So again, another year, another batch of mistakes. Uh, the, you, know, you know, the important thing is to learn from them. So I've learned I, it's not worth my while keeping plastic mulch. It's not worth my while using uh, compost uh, cut so heavily into a potting soil mix unless I've solarized it or sterilized it. Even if it's free, I mean, I, I got what I paid for it. And, uh, and the other thing was is you really, uh, you know, that, that heating mat and such is really good for germination. So I would say I'll, I'll not do that again. Okay, I'll take you to the start here and we can look down the row. So we have, I don't know, it's probably about 30 pumpkins in there. Like I said, with my poor germination, we should have had probably a hundred pumpkins, but anyways, live and learn. So again, three mistakes that uh, I would say I did this year uh, when it comes to this crop is number one, uh, don't try and reuse my plastic mulch. It just is not worth the time. You're gonna end up weeding. Uh, you're gonna end up with torture. Uh, so not worth it. Number two, free compost or compost that hasn't been solarized or hasn't reached the right heat. Don't use it in your starts. Or if you're gonna use it, put it somewhere where you can easily weed. Uh, it is gonna cause you problems. And number three, uh, when it comes to germination, even though you might have a greenhouse, uh, heat mats, indoors, to get started, uh, for me, I noticed a huge difference in my germination. So I would definitely recommend, uh, even on a later planting, if you have a greenhouse or a little hothouse set up, keep them on the heat mats. Uh, I noticed a huge difference. Anyways, I uh, hope everyone enjoyed that. Maybe you learned a little something, learned from my mistakes. God knows I make enough of them. Uh, so if I hopefully have helped someone not make one mistake, I'll consider this a win. 
Anyways, everyone have a good night and we'll see you next time.